Hey YouTube, Mike that tankless guy here. How we all doing? Hope we all had a safe and productive week. All right, today's video, I'm going to try to just hammer in to servicing a tankless heater. Now, I'm standing behind two Navion units, one condensing, one non-condensing. It's part of my studio. I'm trying to get these set up. I got a gas tank. I want to pipe these in, so both of them vent them. So they're a training um, pieces of equipment. They're mounted on the racks. Um, but because of the knee surgery, I wasn't able to get them finished. I got my two Renais over here for training. So basically, what I'm going to show you goes for pretty much every tankless as long as it has a valve kit on it. Now this is just a, a valve kit for hot water but it's a matching for cold. It's got the relief valve on it. It's got the um, cold water which has the um, on off valve and has the uh, service port. This one if you have it in this position water will flow out of the tankless or if it was cold water will flow up into it when you turn this off and of course this one is turned off but when they're brand new you need to give them a little oomph. Let me just give it a little oomph here. If I can figure out how to close this darn thing. Okay, there we go. So, once it's in this off position, you could take this off, put your hose on it, turn it on, and now you start servicing. See how easy it is once you give it a little oomph, it's very easy. These are happen to be manufactured by Navion, but you can get Apollo, Combraco, there's tons of kits out there. All right, we have two valve kits on this tankless. Let me zoom in. We have the valve kit on it. I'm gonna lower this down a little bit. You can see a little better. There's the valve kit. You have, let me get this uh, electric out of the way. You have your cold water, which your cold water port. You have your hot water, which your hot water port. Here's your valves, that would be on. And of course, when I, I did this, this, these were brand new out of the box, so let's give these just a little oomph here, just to get them set. Okay, so that's the way they normally would be, something like this, you know, or like this, or on an angle, because you have filter up here, and then you have your hot, and then you have your two service ports. Okay, so, let me get this back, we'll show you. Now, you can pretty much, there's a lot of tankless service products on the market. I have just the bucket to show you. Now, I have videos there. I have videos out there that actually I am servicing tanklesses on job sites, showing exactly what to do. I have multiple of these videos, but I want to hammer in that this is the steps this is the procedure to do it. People message me, well, this guy says don't do this. This guy says don't do that. I have 16 years doing tanklesses. A tankless works the same no matter what product. You have water coming in, you have water going out, you have some type of, now I'm talking about gas, no electric. You have some type of flame that heats it, you have electric that powers it. There's safeties in there, there's water turbines, there's things in here that see how much water is coming in and that vamps up the burner. They all work the same. They all work the same. They're just a different color, a different brand, a different label, different configuration of the piping down there, but they all have hot, cold, gas, electric, if it's and a relief. If it's condensing, it has a condensing drain. If it's non-condensing, it doesn't have a condensing drain. We're gonna take the camera off. We're gonna show you underneath this in a little while. And then you have a relief pipe and then some type of hard wire going into it or a plug. They're all the same, period, end of story. And the procedure that I'm showing you may just differ 
about 98% for each tankless, and that only has to do with the filter, the inlet water filter that goes up into the tankless when the cold water goes up and through the valve kit. Okay? So, let's show you. This is the product that we use. This is the exact bucket. Now, I do not have, we carry three of these. My other truck had to take all of them because they have 14 services to do today. And these are scheduled services for hotels and, and restaurants or bed and breakfasts. So we're scheduled at a certain time to get there. One place has five, another place has six, and another place has two. So if you do the math, I think that's what it comes out with. So we use a company called FlowAid. This is the bucket that it comes in and right here is everything that you get with the bucket. You get the pump, you get two hoses, and you get uh, a quart of the descaler. Now, we do not, we, we carry, we have three five gallon tubs, five gallon buckets that we carry. We pump in one, we pump it out, four pumps equals a quart, and we, we put it into another bucket, mix it with water, put a lid on it, and then we bring it from job to job. We look at it to see how the flow is and how the color of the descala, because it becomes a little bit like a, a bit cloudy when you mix the water with the descala. But if it starts turning dark or greenish, then you wanna, make, you wanna bring more descala. So we do fill up a couple of quarts on, and we leave them on the truck, but that's just for a backup in case like today, they took three buckets with them, plus three uh, of these. And they're going to use one bucket until it turns a certain. So you're going to average a home. You're going to average, if you do it every year, you're going to average about four, three to four services on one quart. So it's one quart and it's about a gallon and a half of water. Enough to bring the water just like above the pump when the pump sits in here, this pump right here. All right, and we're gonna go over the pump in a minute. Now, you're gonna look at it and like if you're a homeowner and you're gonna do it, you're gonna buy the kit, it's about 150 bucks. You actually can use the descaler, do your service, and then seal the bucket with a lid, like a Home Depot bucket, you could buy a lid, seal it, it's airtight, and you could use it for the next year. And then dump it. So you can get away with one quart every year. Or you can go out and buy four gallons of distilled white vinegar. Yes, distilled white vinegar, right from the store. The reason we went to this type of system is to carry the vinegar on the truck takes up a lot of room. And that's real estate, and that's important. That's stuff we may not be able to uh, have. Now, as a professional, as a plumber out there, you're gonna find that you're only gonna get less than a year out of the hoses. The ends are what's going to deteriorate because the solution is like still distilled white vinegar, but on steroids. Do not, now I'm gonna use this for demonstration purposes only. Don't use this metal hose and say, oh, I can get more time out of it. It starts to eat away at this, becomes extremely pointy, and it's going to poke the hell out of you. So do not just use the rubber hoses, buy cheap ones. You're going to end up with, you know, maybe uh, every year, like two every, you know, maybe year and a half or so. We, we each swap them out every six months. We just swap the hoses out every six months. But like I said, they took all the pumps, everything, they brought it to the job, but this is an explanation of it. Once you get it going, once you plug it in, and all the steps that I'm gonna say you need to do, you just sit there and wait and have a cigar for the 30, 40 minutes that you, you flush them out. And see, that's why they had to bring the three because we flush them for 45 minutes each. Okay? All right, so we have our bucket and we have, and yes, you can use this bucket. It does come with a lid, but buy a five gallon bucket with a lid on it. That's where you're gonna mix it. And then when you're done, you let the pump drain, you clean it up and you put it in. Now, the pump, if you wanna get at least a year or better out of it, we only get seven months 
out of a pump. And we do this procedure after we've, we're done with all the, fl all the flushing. We do so many, the pumps just get eaten away, we have to buy a new kit. When you're done with the flusher, if you have multiple flushes, when you're done, dump out the solution, fill the bucket with water, put the pump back in, plug it back in, and let it pump out. So just let the one hose that's attached to the pump, that would be the, the pump. It's, remember, the pump sucks from the bottom. So the pump, this pump here, sucks from the bottom. And there's only one outlet, and it pumps out this way. So submerge this in clean water. Just let the hose on the floor and let it run until the bucket is empty and then maybe put a little more water in it. Flush it out. You'll get more time out of it. We do that, but we still have to change a pump every six months. So, all right. So I got a big pump here. Now, the pump. The pump should be rated at about 3.5 to 4 gallons per minute. Why? Because these units, even the smallest Renai or smallest Navion or Bosch or Rima or Takagi is about six gallons or so a minute. If you take a pump, and I'm going to show you, and this is another reason I brought this pump in. This is, um, I don't even know the rating on it. It's so damn old. But this thing does 1,500 gallons per hour, 25 gallons per minute. So this is a pump we use to pump out big commercial heaters. All right, you don't want to push 25 gallons per hour of water through the heat exchanger because it is way over exceeding what the maximum GPM of the heat exchanger is. So they're saying, oh, just go to Harbor Freight and buy a pump. No, buy the kit. I charge $200 per service or I give uh, a yearly maintenance for commercial. So just say, and I heard up to $500 through people messaging me. Even if it's 200 bucks, you spend $150 on the system. It gives you a quart. It's good for two years. That's $400 you saved, okay? That is a massive savings because you spent the 150. You were already $50 under the first. So it's $250 you save because in the second year you made money. That's if you're a homeowner. If you're a contractor or a plumber and you do it, then your first one, you're gonna save, you're gonna recoup what you spent and then you'll be making money on your services, okay? So buy the kit. The kit is specifically designed for any tankless. It doesn't say, oh, this is a, uh, a Renai, or this is a not Navion, or this is a Bosch um, service kit. It's a tankless service kit, period. All right, so we got that straight. Let me just quickly put the hose on this, and let me just put this in the bucket so we get some weight in it, and we'll put our other little phony hose in here. So this is the way you're going to be set up before you start your system there before you start your flushing you're going to have your bucket you're going to have your solution with your water in it and you're going to have your two hoses now we we use two black hoses so we got to sometimes know oh, which one's the one that comes from the pump which one is the other one so the silver hose comes from the pump the gray hose is what goes back into the pump all right so let's get this back here all right so first thing you're going to go to the tankless is you're going to unplug it. You're going to unplug the tankless. Because you don't want power through it. If you have power through it and you start pumping, it's going to fire up the unit because it's going to turn the water servo valve on. So you're going to unplug the tankless. Then, okay, then you're going to come over and you're going to shut off your cold water. You're going to shut off your hot water. You're going to pop your relief valve and you're going to let as much water as you can drain from the system. All right. Now, every tankless has an inlet water filter. Now, I'm going to take the camera off and we're going to come to this and we're going to show it to you. But hidden behind the electrical outlet here, and I have them hand tight. Like I said, I don't want to prolong this because there's a lot of important stuff 
to go over. You're going to remove the inlet filter. Now, on a Navion, it is not removable. On a, on a ream, it's not removable. There's a few of them that will not remove. There will be a, a next video is going to show you about the Renai, the tool we have, how to remove it, and then clean it. All right, so you remove the filter. Now, if the unit, uh, especially if it's a Navion, the unit is going to, and it's a recirc unit, all right? So it's, a, it's an A2, the unit. So that means it's got a recirc pump built into it. And it recircs either by a dedicated return line or through the water um, bypass valve. You're going to have a filter on the pump. You're going to remove that filter. Both filters are identical. So both filters are identical. Now, on units that you remove the filter, and the filter can be removed off of the housing, you're going to leave the filter off, and you're going to clean it and put it in the bucket, and let it sit in there for the 45 minutes while you flush it. These do not get removed. So what you're going to do is you're going to, if there's gunk on it, you're going to take a brush, and you're going to brush off the filter. You're going to swish it in the bucket of solution, brush off the filter, swish it, Get an interior brush, get a paper towel, clean it out, blow on it, get a, if you have a compressor, blow air through it, and then Bob's your uncle. You'll have it nice and clean. So now on a Navion, you're gonna put everything back in. You're gonna put the filter back in. Or if it's a Renai or any other brand, you're gonna put that back in. And you're gonna put in the pump filter. Once you get that in, you have the water off, you're going to take off your caps. Just let them sit there. They're on, all of them have them on little retainers. Let them sit there. All right, let's see. We got them. We're in frame. All right, you're going to bring your bucket over. Now, some tanklesses are going to be up higher. You might have to put them on another bucket. Some places we have to put them on a ladder. You're going to tie the one hose come on into the cold water then you're going to take the loose hose the hose that's not attached to the pump you're going to put that in the bucket you're going to put that onto the hot water side you're going to tighten it down make sure the washers are good then you're going to turn both the hot and cold water on the two little valves so, both hot and cold are the same. You're going to shut off the water, take the cap off, lose the washer, and turn it on. We'll get that washer later. All right? So now you're set to service. Let's pull it back. Get it back up in frame. All right, now you're going to take the cord from the um, pump. You're going to plug it into the outlet. Now, if it's an exterior unit and it's hardwired, that you can use Milwaukee's 18 volt battery. Uh, 18 volt. Um, why can't I get the word out? Power supply. So you take a 18 volt, and, and, and DeWalt makes one too. Um, you just click in an 18 volt, turn it on, plug it in. We got like eight tankless services and it was two bars of battery. And that was on like an 8 battery. Okay, so plug it in, plug it into, some, well, you might have to run an extension cord. So we carry a long extension cord on the truck too. But with this battery thing, man, it works great. Next video, every, that'll be showcased. But right now we have an interior unit and there's a plug there. So you plug it in, look at the time, 45 minutes. All right, 45 minutes is done. You're going to unplug the pump. Now, of course, if it's an interior unit, you might have to get a bucket underneath. If the relief valve is not piped outside, just piped on the floor like it's in a garage, put a bucket underneath it, prevent water to get on the floor, pop the relief valve. Try to get as much of the solution out. All right? Now, take off your hot water first. Why? Because what's going to happen 
is you're going to drain back into the bucket. All right, so once you have the hot water uh, valve off, I can't get my finger in there. Come on. There we go. All right, you got your hot water off. And, you know, try, even though you're in grass and everything, try to be neat. Drain out your, your hose. All right, shut off your red valve. Don't turn any of the other valves on yet. Cap off, put your cap back on, then come over, do your cold water. Let it drain back into the bucket. Now remember, use the five gallon bucket, don't use this bucket, because then you're gonna make it nice and neat, you're gonna take it out to the curb, you're gonna take it out of the bucket, you know, let the water drain out, seal the bucket, clean everything up, put it back into this bucket. We keep them in that bucket that it came with from the factory. We have a separate bucket. All right, now, turn off your cold water. Put on your cap. Now, come back and remove your filter again. Now, there's guys out there, other, other and, and if it's a uh, Navion, remove the, uh, we're not going to remove the, uh, remove that one too. Guys out there, oh, you, you, no, listen. You're going to have crap in that bucket. You're, there's going to be crap in the pump. There's going to be debris. You want to look at this filter again because you don't want to leave. And then an hour later, you get a phone call from your office. Hey, Mrs. McKillicuddy, you were just at, they got hardly any water pressure. You didn't check it. Check it. Clean it off. You look at it. Looks good. Put it back in. So now the system is ready to be fired back up. But there's one more step. You don't want to bring the solution, vinegar, that solution, it's not bad, it's non-toxic, good for the environment, yada, yada, yada. Turn your cold water back on. Now, if it's an outside unit, Bob's your uncle because the relief pipe goes into the dirt. If it's an inside unit, you need that bucket again, so don't get rid of that bucket. You want to pop the relief valve and let the solution get out, either on the ground in the grass, so the mulch, or in a bucket. Close the relief valve, turn on your hot water valve, which now isolates the um, service valves, and then go and flush out all the faucets. After that's done, plug it back in, let it all cycle through, make sure the temperature is good. On some of the units, you may have to reset the clock. You may have to reset the parameter on the temperature, get it set, then go inside and start testing and hot water. What we do, we have two air radios, one guy's outside, one, we're, one guy goes inside, take your shoes off, whatever you gotta do, go around, fire, okay, is it firing? Yep, is it firing? Yep, is it firing? Yep. Get hot water, get hot water, give them the bill, they give you a check. Who's your uncle? Bob. You can probably do five to six a day, okay? Five or six a day at $200 a pop, it's between 1,000 and 1,200 bucks. And all you did is use solution and gas, of course. And whatever you go at McDonald's or if you go to a nice diner for lunch. Okay, let me show you something about the Navion. Now, that's all we install. That's all we install. I have my bathroom door's open, but I got seven, eight units over there. I'm not walking over to close the bathroom door. That's what we stop. With a Navion unit, oh my God, it's a game changer. Now I'm gonna show you why. I'm gonna take the camera. Actually, let me leave the camera on. <clears throat> on a Navion unit. Let me go down low. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna take the camera off because I want to show you the plug before I take it off. So give me a second here. Let me figure this out. You know, all these months off from, from school here with that knee. Okay, now, on a Navion unit, I gotta make sure I kneel down right. On an A2, you're gonna have that, see that with that yellow piece of paper? You're gonna have this plug. 
you're going to take this plug or cap, excuse me, off. It's plastic. There's a little Korean water in there. And then you're going to remove it and it says, see, do not remove the factory installed recirculation inlet cap unless a return line is connected to this fitting. Water leakage may occur if the cap is loose or missing. And then, of course, it's a, it says it again on the other side. Why is this here? Because, one second, ugh, you're going to put, I got to get this in the right position now. You're going to put this. Okay, let's just put it like that. All right, you see what that does? You have a cold water, you have a hot water, and now you have a place to put the recirc. And for you, those of you that are familiar, on a recirc system, you need to tie it into the cold water with a check valve on the cold and a check valve on the recirc. Here, everything is built into the Navion right here. There's check valves and everything built into it. And there's another cleaning filter right here if you have a recirc. Now, why is this a game changer? Because with this a Navion A2, now of course you have a hot water pipe that would come out of here and go, you know, whatever, to the house. And then coming from the father's fixture, you would have a line coming back here. There'd be a valve, a bleeder. You can go back and look at other videos of mine. I show how to pipe it. But with this unit, all you need is to tie from you need to tie from the bucket one hose here and one hose here go into service mode and it will give you three times 30 60 and 90 minutes you hit okay now i can't do it with this because this these are just demo units right now i have to get stuff to get them fired but you go into menu you go into service mode you pick the time, go up and down arrow of what time you, how many, how, you know, you want 30, 60, 90 minutes, hit OK, and you do not need a pump. That pump right here, let me get up. That pump, that is the circulating pump right here, the recirc pump, will actually run for that time and pull the solution out of the bucket into this port right here, out of this port back into it goes right through the heat exchanger no pump the pump is there all you need is two hoses solution and a bucket so that is a massive game changer for us considering you know how many hundred of these i have installed and most of the residential units are a2s so if they have to do a bunch of them during the day, they don't need to bring the pumps with them. I wish they did today because they're all commercial and those are S2s. Same unit, no pump. All right, so basic. Get to the job or go down where your tankless is. Unplug it. Close your water. Bleed out. Hook up your pump to the cold side water service hook up your hot out back to the bucket now some of the valve kits have a valve and then a valve you know they have similar to that but that thing there automatically in one position lets water go this way and in another position lets water go the other way and right now you see, it's in the off position. I can't see you. Now we're going to turn it to the on position. And you see, you see right through it. So right now water is going in and shutting water off from here. And then if you turn it, it now diverts the water out through the tankless. Does the same thing with the cold water. It diverts the water so, and, and just because this is a Navion brand, and you can go back in videos and look for where I show a couple, like four different valve kits from like a $30 one to a $125 one. 
And I always recommend using something that's around $90. Most, if not all, tanklesses come with a valve kit. Navion, these units do not come with a valve kit. But <clears throat> Navion produces a valve kit that's very good. Stainless steel inside, stainless steel shaft, stainless steel here, so they don't rot off and break or break in the closed position or just don't shut off. Okay? All right, YouTube. Um, all right, like I said, next video will be a little bit more on the Renai filter, the Renai tool, and I'll show you that, and how to remove a Renai uh, filter, how to take it apart, how to clean it, how to take it out, and possibly have to replace it. Okay? All right, YouTube, uh, again, thank you for the likes, comments. Please ring, you know, look for that bell, hit it, you know, give me a, a thumbs up. It, it just helps my algorithm on the, on the, the um, uh, channel. My email will be below if you have a question. Now, on certain questions, like with problems and stuff, where I need to, say, I, I, need to I need to charge a consulting fee because it does take... It could take two days for me to go through, look at FaceTime videos, you know, FaceTime with you, look at videos, look at pictures, send you drawings, tell you what's wrong, give you a written thing to tell you what's wrong. So I charge between $100 and $150 to do that consulting. And that gets you, that gets me for you to the end and then some. Okay? Alrighty. I hope you enjoyed this video. You all be safe out there. And I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye now. Be safe.